Welcome UCL fans, and more specifically Bronx Bear Ticks fans, or fans of Joey Pokey AMD. Uh, my name is Nintendo Fanatic 64 and I'm here doing a unofficial kind of draft analysis for the United Championship League Season 2. Uh, today we're going to be, of course, going over the Bronx Bear Ticks draft. So, uh, if you do, before we get into that, if you do enjoy this video, please leave it a thumbs up and let me know. Uh, don't forget to subscribe for more UCL content. I'll be doing review and analysis videos every Tuesday. So, uh, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Bronx Bear Ticks Season 1 draft first. So as we can see over here, had Manaphy, uh, Tornadus Therian, Weavile, Ampharos, Reuniclus, and Cobalion. Uh, of course, the Ampharos was Mega. Amungus, Selgor, Dugtrio, Rhydon, Claydol, and Audino. And you can see some of his best mons were Manaphy, the Tornado, basically all of his OU mons. Reuniclus was also a big hitter from Season 1 as well. And not only that, had a pretty impressive record at 12-3, and 3, but let's not forget, of course, the Bronx Bear Ticks are the champions of Season 1. And by winning Season 1, they actually got to franchise one of the Pokemon on their team. So no matter where they fell in the draft, they got it automatically. They did not have to worry about somebody else sniping their draft. So with their win, they ended up taking Manaphy as their draft pick, and it became their third overall pick, so that gave him only two choices when it came to OU. So taking, speaking of this season's draft, draft blah, let's take a look at what he drafted. So, and this he actually managed to not only get Manaphy, but he was also the number one draft uh, choice in the OU tier. If you didn't see the draft, they randomized the entire order of the draft of who would be drafting in what order, and it went in a snake-style format. So first to 16th, then 16th to first, then first back to the 16th again. So he managed to actually get the very first pick, which he went with Kiram Black for this one and very interesting um he had hit planned it was on the top of his list it you know if he got manaphy he wanted that kieran black to go with it and it they do really kind of counter each other's weaknesses a little bit with it you know um kieran black i believe being weak to things such as like fighting and other dragon types i think it's still weak to ice because i don't think ice resists itself on it and manaphy can absorb all of those hits pretty well uh second pick was garchomp from ou uh so managing in the first round just in the first ou tiers pulled out two dragon types in kira black and garchomp and of course manaphy was franchised um which he got to keep because of winning season one uh in his UU picks, he managed to draft Reuniclus again, who as you can see he brought to 11 battles from season 1 and won, uh, had 10 knockouts, only was knocked out 3 times itself, so if you weren't understanding what those numbers were, that is what they are for, um brought Snorlax which is definitely an interesting uh, choice on it, so kind of starting to build a wall and drafted Mega Agron as his third OU pick. And then as we start going down the tiers here, we can actually start seeing that he is drafting more defensively and a lot of people are saying that he's building walls around his uh, dragons that he drafted in Kieran Black and Garchomp. In RU, he drafted, of course, Tangrowth, which is definitely another uh, kind of big, fat wall that a lot of people have to deal with and also gets Regenerator. Drafted Alomomola, another fat, you know, water type, in this case, uh, wall. Also gets access to Regenerator. Uh, and also drafted Flygon, so he gets a Defog user, because I'm pretty sure none of his other Pokemon can learn Defog before that. And yet, his third Dragon type... And for those who watch, of course, Joey Pokeyane, uh, he is known for the phrase drop a Draco, so he has not one, not two, but three Dra uh, Draco Meteor users on his team, so it's going to be very scary to use. Um, from his NU picks, he drafted Rhydon again, uh, so Rhydon didn't do a whole lot of work, brought it to seven battles, was knocked out six times, and uh, managed to get two knockouts during that time, but another good you know, Stealth Rock user for him. Uh, managed to also snag Garboder, which was a huge snipe, because um, the Philadelphia Feraligators were hoping to draft Garboder again, and if you did not see it, once it was chosen, the coach flipped out, got super depressed, because 
was planning on drafting Garboder and just missed out on it. Uh, and this not only does that, but it also gives him, uh, you know, I believe Garboder gets access to spikes and toxic spikes, so he already has a stealth rocker, a spike user, and a um, toxic spike user as well. And then for his final pick, he did pick uh, Pyroar, which I believe, looking at it, is his only fire type, because he did a lot more with dragon typing at the beginning. So he has dragon ice, dragon ground, water, psychic, normal, uh, steel rock, but when it goes mega, it drops the rock typing, so it goes steel, grass, water, uh, dragon ground again, ground rock, poison, fire type. So big thing that's kind of missing from his team is a fairy uh, typing on it. Uh, not necessarily everyone needs a fairy typing, but he could definitely need, you know, he's going to need something when it comes to dealing with fairies as well, which is probably why he did pick up like Garboder as well as Mega Agron, because of course uh, the fairy types are weak to steel and poison types, and with a very glaring uh, fairy type weakness on his team he needed something to counteract that he also has kind of an ice weakness between uh, Garchomp, Flygon, Rhydor, Rhydon, uh, Tangrowth so he has a lot of ice types that he has to deal with um, again I don't remember if, well, if, um, yeah, if Kirim Black is actually weak to ice types or not let's actually take a quick look while I'm here so, Kurum Black is weak to Dragon Fairy, Fighting Rock, and Steel. So, it doesn't, so it doesn't uh, resist Ice, but at least Ice is neutral to it. But again, a lot of Dragon weaknesses with his three Dragon types on there already. Um, also, you know, Fighting weaknesses between Agron, Snorlax, Kurum Black. So, and try, I'm looking through it. I, Flygon is his only way of controlling hazards a little bit because I believe Flygon also does get Stealth Rocks. I'm not 100% too sure on that. Um, but I do know that it does get Defog, and Defog is definitely going to be needed because if he wants to bring in like his Kirim Black, he doesn't want it to be taking hits uh, from the rocks as it enters into it. Other than that, he doesn't have an overwhelming uh, weakness to rock types on his team, but definitely you know a lot of you know heavy hitters and dragon typings as well as a lot of big walls so he has kind of built a wall around his dragons to keep his dragons protected for it it's going to be interesting you know him having Manaphy once again doing really well and just the battling style of Joey and the Bronx Baratix, I think they're going to go far. I have, you know, a lot of people are predicting it that he's going to make it into the championships again this season. Um, as you can see, I mean, he has three Mons from his championship team that he did manage to draft in Rhydon, Reuniclus, and Manaphy, and he has a lot of other interesting Mons as well. Um, let me just look through. Does not have much of an electric type, but Kiram Black does get electric type attacks with it, uh, so that'll definitely be something helpful for him. And I'm sure other ones can learn electric types, but um, doesn't really have much in a way of a flyer, but Flygon, like I said, does at least get things such as Defog to help himself out. I'm just kind of looking through his Season 1 versus Season 2 list, and it'll be very interesting, to say the least, you know, Tangrowth, Alomomola, both being regenerator users, so if it gets down to 50%, I mean, he can switch back and forth between the two of them to try and, you know, get the moment until he figures out what the other person is going to do with it, but... You know, but that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Uh, if you do enjoy this video, you know, please leave a thumbs up and, you know, let the UCL know that you want to see this become, like, a official, you know, I call this, like, a little news correspondent type thing. I don't know what you want to call it, but, you know, this is all unofficial. This is just me having fun doing this and letting people get, like, another view of how you know these are going down in the ucl this season so thank you all very much again for watching you all have yourselves a good night take care